November 1st. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Romans 8, 9. The Spirit of Christ is the great convincer of sin. He shall convince the world of sin. Have you thus received him? Has he discovered to you the moral leprosy of his nature, the exceeding sinfulness of sin? Do you know anything of the conflict of which the Apostle speaks in the seventh chapter of this epistle to the Romans? The law of the mind in battle, with the law of the members. And has this discovery led you to self condemnation, to self renunciation, and to lay your mouth in the dust before God? If this be so, then the Spirit of Christ is a spirit of conviction in you, and by this you may know that you are Christ's. The Spirit of Christ leads to Christ. He is the sinner what John was to the Messiah. He goes before as the forerunner of the Lord's salvation. He prepares the way, and he heralds the coming of Jesus into the soul. This was one specific object for which he was sent, and which entered essentially into his mansion, to lead men to Christ. Has he led you to Christ? Can you say, Christ is made unto me wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption? What do you think of Christ? Is his blood precious? Does his righteousness give you peace? Does his grace subdue your sins? Do you in sorrow travel to his sympathy, in weakness take hold of his strength, in perplexity seek his counsel, in all your steps acknowledge and wait for him? Is Christ thus all in all to you? Then you have the Spirit of Christ. This, the venture to assert your encouragement, you may resort to Christ. And there may be no sensible apprehension, no realizing touch, no manifest presence. Yet, if your heart goes out after Jesus, if your spirit travels alone to him, praying for his sympathy, panting for his grace, thirsting for his love, and you are led to say, Lord, the desire of my heart is to your name, and to your remembrance of you. I seem not to see you, to touch you, to apprehend you. Yet I come, and I find a heaven in coming. And for ten thousand worlds I dare not, I could not stay away. Then, dear reader, you have the Spirit of Christ, and are Christ's. Not only does the Spirit lead to Christ, but he also conforms those thus to lead the image of Christ, He guides us to Christ, not for consolation and instruction only, but also for assimilation. If we are humble, we have the Spirit of Christ, for he was humble. If we are meek, we have the Spirit of Christ, for he was meek. If we believe, we have the Spirit of Christ, for he lived a life of faith. If we love God, we have the Spirit of Christ. For he was the incarnation of love. If we are holy, we have the Spirit of Christ. For he was without sin. If we are obedient, meek, and self-denying and suffering, silent in provocation, submissive in chastisement, patient in tribulation, and rejoicing in hope, then we have the Spirit of Christ. For he was all this. Thus, the possession of this immense, This indispensable blessing comprises two grand themes. First, to become the subject of an actual and permanent in-being of the Spirit. And second, to be assimilated in character and disposition to the Savior. And while it is most certain that if the first mentioned blessing is obtained, the second follows. Yet it is the second we are to look as the fruit and evidence of the first. The question Am I Christ's? Hinges upon the answer to the question, Have I the Spirit?